is West Street in Sittingbourne. Now I remember the pub that used to stand on the south side opposite, although I never went in there. And the raised walkway I remember as a child was a great vantage point for watching the carnival go past. An inn called the Seven Stars once stood on the site. The map of 1791 seems to show a building here, but opposite were just meadows and orchards. This part of the road, the main road through Sittingbourne, was known as Water Lane Head because it was at the top of Water Lane. When Water Lane itself was later renamed, Water Lane Head became known as West Street. At some time the old pub was pulled down and a new building was put here, described by Canon Scott Robertson as a modern building and he was writing in the 1860s and 70s. The pub had several changes of name. Mary Mappham was here when it was known as the Cherry Tree in 1824, followed by Thomas Coleman, described as a dealer, in 1832 to 1839. The road outside may also have been known as Cherry Tree Hill at one time. Coleman moved along the road and Thomas Miller took on the inn around 1840 to 1841. He lived here with his family and a large number of lodgers, mainly labourers. A wheelwright by trade, John Roper, who was already living in Walter Lane Head, took over the cherry tree and was here around 1847 to 1855. It was still called the cherry tree in 1855 and this was presumably what Scott Robertson described as a modern building. The name change from the Seven Stars to the Cherry Tree had been intended perhaps to reflect the cherry orchards on the Simpson land across the street. The disappearance of those orchards when brick earth was being extracted led to another change of name. At the time of the Indian Mutiny in 1857 and the Crimean War of 1853-56 to the Union flag was considered appropriate. George Blackman was the publican in 1861 and he and his wife had seven paying lodgers, mainly labourers. George was a Sittingbourne man through and through and he was born in 1823. He had married Maria Mannering from Maidstone on the 6th of February 1859. They lost no time in starting a family and they had at least seven children, some of whom survived into adulthood. Their firstborn were Kate and Annie who both being born in March 1860, must have been twin sisters. Neither ever married, and they spent their entire lives in each other's company, mostly at the inn, which the Blackmans ran. The final name of the pub was adopted in 1862, when the 16th Kent Volunteers had begun to meet at the new Corn Exchange in the High Street. This was surely an attempt to drum up business from the Scotties. Water Lane Head is still marked on the maps of 1872, although the street was by now known as West Street. It must have been about this time that Water Lane itself started to be known as Cockleshell Walk. Maria was only 41 years of age when she died, leaving George to run the inn. In 1881, George Blackman was still there, now a widower with six children living under his roof. Annie was the housekeeper, whilst her twin, Kate, was the barmaid, and two of his sons worked in the brickfields. In the cellars of the old pub were two blocked up entrances, which were commonly thought to have been tunnels used by smugglers, much more likely to have been drains. However, the cellars of the old pub were considered to be the last remaining part of the old chapel of St Thomas used by pilgrims on their way to Canterbury and therefore of great interest in antiquity. The pub also boasted a ghost named as Charlie. George Blackman died in 1888. Probate was granted to his daughter Kate Emma Blackman with his effects amounting to just 136 pounds three shillings and tenpence. It was Kate who took over as licensee of the inn, supported by her twin sister Annie, who acted as housekeeper. One of their brothers, Albert, 
lived on the second floor of the inn in a furnished bedroom or bedsit. The other siblings all had other occupations. George and Arthur worked in the local brick fields while William worked as a grocer. The 1908 directory lists Kate Blackman here. And by 1911 it seems to have been just the three of them, Kate, Anna and Albert, and the directory for 1927 still records Kate as the licensee. But by 1930 there was a new incumbent. Kate and Annie, who were now 69 years of age, retired together and lived at 159 Chalkwell Road until their deaths in 1939 and 1943 respectively. A lifetime of service for twins who were devoted to each other. The new licensee in 1930 was Ben Seeger, assisted by his wife Florence, née Rogers. The brewery had been Style and Winch, but this was acquired by Barclay in 1929. Ben and Florence had been married in 1901 and raised a large family – Elsie, Doris, Berenice, Benjamin and at least two others. 1930 must have been a year of mixed fortunes as taking on the volunteers was mixed with sadness. It was the year that their daughter Elsie died. Elsie worked at the Sittingbourne Cooperative Society and had been ill for some seven years before her untimely death at the age of 27. Whether or not the volunteers remained open for the duration of the war is not known. It is likely that Ben, now of retirement age, moved with Florence and at least one of their daughters, Berenice, to 71 West Street. Ben died in 1942. Three years later, in 1945, at the end of the war, Ben's wife Florence died. The next landlord was Lucy Denny, who had taken on the pub by 1945. After the war, the inn had restarted its pub sporting activities. Their teams do not seem to have excelled in their own endeavours at this time, coming fifth in the Truman's Pub Darts League and seventh in the Style and Witch Pub's Football League. Lucy decided to sell up. The East Kent Gazette of the 23rd of September 1949 noted, At Sittingbourne Magistrates Court, the licence of the volunteers at Sittingbourne was transferred from Lucy Marguerite Denny to Bernard Philip Taylor. At the beginning of his tenure, the council was so concerned about war damage that he asked the landlord to improve the site under the War Damages Act. Bernard Taylor and his wife Doris were only at the Volunteers for four years. In 1953, Bernard Taylor moved on to the new inn in Merston. By 1960, the Card family, Frederick, Ivy and David, had taken up residence here. In 1963, Roy McPhee was in charge. By this time, Barclay had merged with Courage and the familiar red sign of the cockerel was displayed outside. Roy was a participating member of the Licensed Victuallers Association and a keen cricketer. The pub boasted a children's room and a garden. Many people remember today playing bar billiards in the back room. But economically it was hard to make a living and the electoral register shows that Roy had vacated the pub the same year, 1963 in favour of P. K. Jones. Mr. Jones was a licensee until 1966. By 1970, the licence had been transferred to William Johnson, who lived at the Volunteers with his wife Irene. Was William the last landlord? It seems likely that he was, for the Goad map makes its last recording of the inn in 1971, and East Kent Gazette photographs indicate that the pub was demolished sometime between April 1972 and July 1974. After the inn and the cottages were demolished, residential accommodation was built on the site sometime in the 1970s or 1980s. If you have found this video interesting, 
please subscribe to our YouTube channel or visit our website.